Hi everyone, welcome to the Swift Arcade. I'm your host, Jonathan Rasmussen. If you're like me, you probably have a love-hate relationship with the UI stack view. It's beautiful in how it doesn't require a lot of auto layout constraints, but sometimes when you're laying things out, it can give you ambiguous layouts and it's really hard to get things sized up nicely. Here, for example, I was working on a view where I wanted each of these views to have the same size, but the stack view is stretching things out and I've got some ambiguity in there. In this episode, I wanna show you four ways of dealing with UI stack view ambiguity, which will help you lay out your stack views nicely and give you the effects you want. Okay, before we get into the solutions, let's quickly go over the problem. Why does stack view do this to the elements we add inside the view? It has to do with the default distribution of how stack view wants to lay things out within its views. By default, stack view has a distribution of fill, which means for all the elements you add in there, it wants to fill the entire stack view as best it can with the elements inside. So in this case, I've got one, two, three, four, five sub views. Basically, these are custom views I've laid out inside. I want them all to look like these top three here, have an intrinsic content size of 20 on these images, but these bottom two is stretching. And you can even see the size of the circles here are different because stack view has to change the size to make it fill that entire space. So this is where ambiguity comes in. It's doing its best to lay it out. This is a tool I'm using called Reveal just to show me what's going on behind the scenes. But you can see here as I go through each one of these views, it's having to stretch these bottom two when I really want them to look all the same size and height like these top three. So now let's look at four different ways we can resolve this ambiguity and get the layout we want. All right, number one, we could hard code the heights. We could take every element that appears within our stack view and remove the ambiguity by hard coding the heights. So in this case, I'm taking each one of these sub views, I'm gonna hard code them to a height of, in this case, 20, and if we run that, that's gonna remove any ambiguity in the stack view because we've hard coded all the heights, it gives us the effect we want and things look good. The only downside to hard coding heights is it's quite rigid. If our stack view or intrinsic content size of our parent view changed, we might get some more ambiguity or conflicting auto layout constraints because these heights are hard coded. But if you know exactly the layout you want, you can hard code the heights and you can remove the ambiguity that way. Second way of removing ambiguity from the stack view. You can play with the intrinsic content size. Here the intrinsic content size of this view is 200. That's what I've set, that's what I thought it needs to look like, but you can see here, because these are stretching, maybe that's not quite the right size. If I reduce the size of my parent intrinsic content size to 160, now instead of it having to stretch to 200, I'm making that requirement a little bit less, I'm saying it's 160, and in that case, that's in a better intrinsic content size, which gives me the height I want and lays everything out nicely. The third way you can remove ambiguity from a stack view is to not pin your stack view to the bottom of the parent. Right now our stack view is fully pinned to all edges of our parent view here. If I remove that bottom constraint here and don't require it to be pinned, that's gonna let the stack view just hang in its more natural size not pull it down and have to stretch the contents of the stack view. And this is a great option if you're not sure exactly how many elements you're gonna have, you want it to flex a little bit and it's not exactly imperative that this fills up all the space down to the bottom. So by not pinning to the bottom, you're letting the stack view just size itself more naturally, another way of removing that ambiguity. And the fourth way we've got for dealing with ambiguity in a stack view is to play with that stack view's distribution properties. In this case, if we set the stack view's distribution to equal centering, 
What that will do is that will take every view within there, try to center them equally and space things out really nicely, filling out the entire intrinsic content side we specified for the parent. What's going on here is we're changing the default property of the stack view from fill, where it's trying to stretch everything to fill the entire stack size as best it can, that's the problem we've got, to instead one called equal centering, where what we do is we take each view center, distribute them equally with regards to one another, while trying to maintain the intrinsic content size of each internal view as best we can. This is a really nice feature because it gives our stack view the ability to add and remove elements. It can shift and grow if it's dynamic. And it just gives us a nice consistent layout while maintaining the intrinsic content size as best it can of everything within here. So another way of handling ambiguity, playing with the stack views, distribution layout. So there you have it folks, four different ways of dealing with ambiguity in your stack views. Give them a try, play with them. Stack views are just one of these things sometimes you need to adjust and play with depending upon the layout of the app you've got. But hopefully those are some handy tips and they'll help you remove any ambiguity you have in your future. All right, thanks for coming everyone. If you enjoyed that, do hit like, do hit subscribe. We'll see you soon. All right, take care. Bye-bye.